Welcome back, everybody. Uh, obviously, if you've seen the title, it's Tackle Tip Tuesday. In today's video, we're going to go over how to tie your own slip bobber knots so you can go ahead and make a thousand of them so you never run out. All right, everybody, uh, like I said in the intro, today's video is uh, another Tackle Tip Tuesday, and it actually was recommended by one of my subscribers that I talk to uh, often. He mentioned that, uh, well, he asked me if I had a slip bobber video to go along with the fact that, uh, or how to tie a slip bobber knot video to go along with the fact that I use slip bobbers pretty religiously. I mean, uh, I, if it's not a slip bobber, well, this is how simple this is. If you guys didn't see it already, I have a Tackle Tip Tuesday all on slip bobbers. Um, basically, it's one of the things I use the most when I'm fishing pretty much anything. Uh, there isn't much that you can't catch on a slip bobber, and uh, I mean, these guys right here, it, they're so versatile. I mean, they make slip bobbers that are this big, and they make big, giant ones that are well, oh, like the size of my thing here. So, I mean, you can see the difference. They make a slip bobber for every species that swims on the planet Earth. And uh, there's a reason for it. They just plain catch fish. But today isn't about the bobber itself, but the little slip stop you need to put on your line right here. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to make these things. And uh, the, it's really simple, I mean, I'm going to try and find this uh, exact same stuff. It's been a while. I, I got this a long time ago. But you guys can see, like, it's just a little line. Um, I tried using a bunch of different line, but in the end I had to cave and I just went and bought slip bobber line. It, and well, that's what this is. I didn't say that, but it is, uh, this says high visibility slip bobber not material. Uh, Do Bro Products, Inc. Uh, this is 50 yards of it, and I was, like, worried that I would, like, run through it. And uh, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I've had this spool probably for, like, eight years now. Um, and for the price of this, no offense to anybody selling slip rubber knots, but, I mean, I, I haven't bought slip rubber knots in years. I just make my own. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it, and, uh, yeah, let's let's get into it. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys the list of things you guys need, and uh, it's really simple. So this box here is a box of 250 stirs, <laughs> uh, Mr. Coffee, stir Stricks, Sticks. These are basically those, uh, what do you call them, like cocktail straws or whatever. Um, I mean, this is what it is. It's got two little straws in there. It's a pretty durable little, little tube. And... Uh, yeah, I think this box, I want to say when I got it brand new like eight years ago, still haven't gone through them, is like eight bucks or five bucks or something like that. But yeah, you need a box of stir straws. This, this right here is the high visibility knot line and a pair of scissors. Uh, that's all you need. Uh, that plus that plus that plus this setup, what I'm going to teach you equals that. Real simple. Uh, what I will do is I will list uh, these two things in the description. So you guys can go down in the description and basically order that and that and then start from there. And if you follow the instructions, I mean, this is a really simple thing to do. And once you get it down, you'll be knocking out bunches like that every time you need, you know, like say you're going on a trip or something, make yourself some slip stops and uh, you'll be good to go. So let's get started. Okay, so to start off, I, I cut these a little bit longer than you need to. Uh, in all technicality, you could probably cut this in about a four foot, <laughs> four foot, four inch, you know, string. Uh, I'm just doing a little extra just so you guys can see how this is done. Uh, I had done one before uh, when I was doing these last time and I have this pile from it. It's very simple. So this is going to be one of the ones that uh, I, I've already got on here, so this is your end result is one on there, and then you'll see how to get to them to that to, to that point. But 
what I'm going to show you here is so with these stir stri sticks uh, or straws, whatever you want to call them, you go through and you use them side by side like this. Uh, it's, it's pretty simple, but it does take a little bit of dexterity. The thing is, is if you if if you have a hard time with this, they actually make a tool for this. But in order to save yourself some money, uh, this is the easiest way to do this. So you take your string, you lay it between them. So if you can see that, I'm between them al along the groove in in the you know in the straw, so like that. And then what I'm going to do here is. I'm gonna go, I believe, yeah, let me see, this way, yep. And then, so, around, away from you. So like if you're holding them, it's, it's hard to tell, but you know, like this is my right hand, this is my left hand. Um, you go around, away from you. And like I was explaining this before, I, it's a, a really easy thing to do, but it's also really easy to mess up. So it takes a little bit of practice and it takes a little bit of uh, patience, I guess you could say, which this is probably how I develop patience because it's been a while since I've done this. So I'm gonna try and do this without talking for a second here and just kind of show you guys, or I'll talk you through it afterwards. So around, I like to pinch it right there. Pull it tight. So if you can see that, I'm, below where I wrapped it around and I'm holding the cross so where it came over and I crossed uh, where it's laying on the straws and the trick here is now you want to stay below each wrap so I give myself a little room see that's the, that's the hardest part I think about this whole thing is staying below each wrap Two, three, four, five. I'm kind of just doing this from memory really quick here. Um, so sorry if you, I'm not really talking to you guys through that part. But So you get five wraps. You still have that one in the middle you're squeezing. And you slide them up so they're tight against each other. And then you go over to the back of the straw. So, so the last wrap, that's five right here. So you go over to the back of the straw while holding these tight. And like I said, this is this has been a while, so bear with me. Um, you take that little tag in. So this is the back of the straw. I'm holding with this finger, I'm holding that front of the straw tight and you stick that through there just like that. So I went underneath it and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull it and pull it back over to the front. So now I pulled it back to the front of the straw. So that one's still in the groove. That's the one we started with. This is the one on the top that I just pulled back around. And I'm gonna try and pull them a little bit tighter right there. And now because I already have one on here, you can, normally it wouldn't matter which one you started with, which whatever one you wanted to tie tie them to. But I'm gonna pull the one out of there while holding the knot very carefully that doesn't have one on it, and I'm gonna very carefully pull this tight, just like that. So now you just pull that nice and tight. In both both directions very slowly you check to make sure that it's smooth like that and then all you do is this so like you can see I have a bunch of extra here I'm very like OCD I guess you would say when it comes to this this kind of thing so like I don't want these super long so what I would do is I go to a, like a, a size that I like them to be able to pull on them so cut those down now you have two little tags that are nice Nice and neat, and I even trim them down even further than that when they're on my fishing line. But now you just take these and slide it down. 
And uh, since I'm doing this video, I might as well just do a whole stick of them. But, so, I already have two on there. And, yeah, they'll look a little bit different, but that's basically how you want it to look when you're done. And, like, you just take this and go back. And I'm not going to do another one right away, just because that's basically, if you guys want to go over there, you can just rewind it and watch it again and again. Um, but you can you can subsequently keep doing it until you're you know you have a stack of like eight to ten of them on these straws or depending on what you can fit on there but the trick here is you slide them down you know space them evenly when you get to the point and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut them off in pieces about that big so like I could slide this down a little further and you want enough on each side so that when you have these in your tackle box or in, like I put them in a little baggie or a little compartment this knot can't come off very easily and uh, that way when they're bouncing around and stuff like that because your tackle bounces around when you're in the boat or just walking whatever and uh, you cut them off like that so you can fit like I said you can fit probably you know 10 to 15 of these on each straw which I mean as easy as that is, so 15 of them, that's normally what you get when you buy like a little baggie of them. And this is probably, you know, 15 to 20 of them. So that's probably two straws worth. And you've seen how long the string was that I cut off of this, which was about, it was like six to eight inches long. You could probably do four inch to six inch pieces of this line. And if you do the math yourself on 50 yards, I'm really bad at math, but I know there's thousands of these to be made from this one spool. <laughs> uh, well, at least a couple hundred of them. And I mean, in your lifetime, it'd be really hard to go through a couple hundred of these unless you're constantly taking them off your uh, line when you're not using it or whatever. But yeah, I'm going to do the a uh, couple more of these, um, fill this thing up myself. So if you guys didn't get a chance to really follow that along, just go back over it and stop it at any point you need to. But like I was saying, I mean, I the, the funny thing is, is so I, I normally have to try it a little bit longer than it took me to do that. You guys saw in real time, like me remembering how to do this. But the, I mean, I guess the hardest part about the whole thing is learning how you're going to hold onto the straw um because you have to be able to pinch that that uh the piece in between there so you you have to learn how to get it in that groove and uh once you get it in the groove and you know how to hold it in place with one finger you'll learn how you turn your hands and everything like that uh to each their own it's really one of those things where like however you feel comfortable pinching it but the biggest and hardest part is really uh it's that first loop over where you're coming over what you went around so like you know when you go around to here you have to come underneath that and then you have to hold that in place while wrapping it five times so and because you're wrapping it down against itself you have to keep those tight otherwise they want to bunch up and flip up above it and uh like i said that's kind of one of those dexterity things where like you see how uh i guess how well you can pinch it and once you get good at that, then all it is is being able to hand it off without letting it unravel, going to the back, going underneath it, and then pulling that back around to the front, and then slowly pulling it tight off of both ends. And then, like I said, because I already had one on there, I already knew which straw I was going to pull out, but it really doesn't matter because it's technically tied around both of them at the very beginning. So when you start from, you know, with nothing on there like that, uh, then it's just pick a straw to pull out, but whatever one you pull out, you have to keep it pinched to the one that it's staying on. Um, and then when you do that, I like to do this thing when you first do it to get used to it. You, you kind of tug one end a little bit, the other one a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and you'll feel it tightening up underneath your fingers. And then you can kind of check it and make sure that the you know the loops are all laying nice, nice and neat next to each other like that, and they're not all bunched up and stuff. And uh, once you get good at it, I mean, I used to just get bored every once in a while and I would do like 15 of these. Um, but the big thing is, is it's like, 
You really don't go through slip barber knots all that often. And when you do, it's because you're, you know, you're fishing some bad waters, stuff like that. So you go through 15 of them. Like, so you can do that from the very beginning, make like 15, 20 of them, put them in a little baggie or put them in like, I keep mine in this little compartment here with my, the slip stop uh, beads that you need. Cause you need a bead, a slip stop and a slip bobber and a split shot or a jig. And that's how you set up your slip barber thing. I'll put my slip barber video at the end of this one if you guys just want to see more about fishing with slip bobbers and stuff like that. But I hope this one helps you guys out. Uh, I'm thankful for the suggestion for Tackle Tip Tuesday for this week. Um, yeah, so all I can say is, obviously, if you're not new here, you know what's up. But if you are new, please just remember to 